Hi, Tenfold. My name is Bobby. Could you please help me with this question? Thank you. It says, prove the following identity. Cos of 2a plus sine or 2 sine of 2a plus 2 is equal to this whole bracketed situation. 3 cos of a plus sine of a multiplied by cos of a plus sine of a. Okay, so the first thing I know that most of you guys get taught when you do identities is start with the complicated side first. And I couldn't agree more. That's fantastic. You need to go, if you see a double angle, you need to go and expand on it and you need to try and make it look like the other side. But also sometimes you're going to need to expand both sides so that they look like each other. And that's kind of the case here because we have two bracket product things. We're going to have to expand on that to try and make them a little bit simpler to make it look like the left hand side. So firstly, I'm going to say that the right hand side looks like the less complicated for me, but I'm still going to multiply it out. So. 3 cos of a multiplied by cos of a gives us 3 cos squared of a plus sine of a multiplied by cos of a plus another 3 sine a cos a gives us 4 sine a cos a. And then the last two are just sine squared a. Okay, so now we don't have any complicated bracketed things. We literally just have a trinomial expressing what we're trying to find. So now, if we look at the left-hand side, the first thing that I see is this cos of 2a. And that becomes a little problematic because sometimes you don't know which to expand it. Because remember, cos of 2a has three different expansions. You've got cos squared of a minus sine squared of a or you could say 2 cos squared a minus 1. Or you could say 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. So which one of these expansions do you choose when you're expanding cos of 2a? I'm going to leave cos of 2a as it is for the moment because we don't know yet. So 2 sine of 2a. Remember, we've got two of them. Sine of 2a expands to 2 sine a cos a. And lastly, plus 2 can be expanded to say 2 times sine squared a plus cos squared a. Remember, 1 is equal to sine squared a plus cos squared a. So let's keep on simplifying this out. So I'm still leaving the cos of that double angle there because I don't know which expansion I need. If we multiply this out, we get 4 sine of a multiplied by cos of a plus 2 sine squared a and remember there's a plus in the middle here so we need to distribute the 2 in there as well plus 2 cos squared of a okay so now I've got to the point where I can't simplify this anymore so now we need to start comparing it to the right hand side if I look I don't have any cos of 2a in this right hand side expression so let's look here. This expression we've already got. So that's done. That's perfect. Then if we look here, we've got 3 cos squared of a. And in our left hand side expression, we've only got 2. So to this, we need to have another cos squared of a. And then if we look at sine squared of a, we've only got 1 here, but 2 over here, which means we need to take away one. How do we do that? Well, this is where our expansion of cos of 2a comes in. Is this not exactly one expansion of cos of 2a? If we put that in to our cos of 2a, we're going to get that exact same expression. So let me write that in. Now we can say that cos of 2a is cos squared of a minus sine squared of a. And then we have the whole rest of our expression, which is exactly what we needed. Sine of a times cos of a plus 2 sine squared of a plus 2 cos squared of a. Okay, so now if we look at like terms, cos squared of a plus 2 cos squared of a is going to give us 3 cos squared of a. Sine squared of a 
negative sine squared of a plus 2 sine squared of a just gives us 1 sine squared a. And this middle term is on its own, so 4 sine a multiplied by cos of a. And if we look up here, what we wrote out originally for the right hand side was this whole expression here. And what we've now got the left hand side to do is look exactly the same. And therefore you have to conclude, therefore, left hand side equals right hand side. Okay, so quite a complicated identity to prove with that one. So hopefully you've picked up a few tips. Firstly, start with the more complicated expression. I didn't in this one, obviously, I still expanded the right hand side. But the left hand side took a lot more expanding because it had two double angle situations. So start with the more complicated side and try and make it look like the less complicated side. Secondly, when you get to cos of a double angle, because it has three different expansions, try to work with everything else and see what's missing from that to compare to the other side. If you can see what's missing, it will show you which expansion of cos of 2a you need to use. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. Lovely question on identities. Thank you so much for sending it through. Guys, it's that easy. Hit us up with a video, show us your beautiful faces and your ugly mats, and we will help you out with it. Now we are going into a career video. So if you look at your trig and you think, where on earth am I ever going to apply this outside of school? Go and check it out because pilots are rad people and they use trig all the time. Take a look at the video. My name's uh, John Pretorius, currently a harbour pilot in the Port of Cape Town. I started a sea career with SAF Marine with the container ships and subsequently came to the ports and busy with, with pilotage at the moment. A port pilot is there for um, insurance purposes. It's a, uh, it's a local representative of the port which will go out to the ships, safely bring them in, navigate in conjunction with the, uh, with the aid of the master. So it's the movement of any vessel within the port, in and out and within the port, shifting around. And that is our core function, is to safely navigate the vessels and make sure the client, the client is as happy as can be with the service. There's three aspects of, of, of any movement, and that is the pilot is one aspect, the tugs, which will accompany the vessel safely in and out, and then the third aspect is the mooring men, which either let the ropes go or tie the vessel up when it's alongside. If there is a vessel which requires a full service, then all three departments will be dispatched. When we're in the assigned berth or, or um, allotted area where we're supposed to bring the vessel, then the lines are run and the mooring men tie the vessel up safely. There's three options. In other words, uh, we have the sailing, we have the docking, and we have the shifting inside. So the dynamics is immense and it beats, for me, a nine to five job. And each one handles differently. So every job is is not the same and once you've done one you can't say you've done them all. Trigonometry is very essential. It stems right from the basics of going to sea. You use it in a broader aspect with regards to any plotting of any course across the globe. It's still a requirement to put down lines on, on your charts. So any course laid off between two points is basic trig. As far as your approaches to the key, where I am at the moment as far as a harbour pilot is concerned, it's basic trig as well because you're working with triangles and approaches and setting into the berth when you're pushing alongside or you're taking it off. You're dealing with many forces. It can be anything from the wind or the weather subject to the vessel. The vessel itself, because each one's independent and not everyone moves or, or is able to maneuver as the previous vessels. And then you've got tugs, which is an, a, another force. So at any one stage, you could have three forces working on a vessel and that all involves a certain amount of calculation in the, in the head and um, it's basic trig all the way through. I love the fact that it is not consistent. The fact that it presents challenges. You are working solely as a person in command with the person in command as in the, the ship's captain. And I think the gratification once the ship is safely tied up and the satisfaction that one sees on the, on the client's face being the port captain or the crew is, 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 is overwhelming. It's, to me that is the most fantastic feeling ever. To become a port pilot you need a certain amount of sea time. 
Uh, it involves one year studying at the Technicon approved establishment. Thereafter, some sea time is required as well. You'll get your first qualification and then be accepted by the port. And thereafter, it's a transition from the tugs. You'll be trained on the tugs as a tug master, and then you'll be progressed to pilot. And we have an in-house training center for pilots uh, basic training. And thereafter, it's an application and practical. And slowly, you'll progress in your pilot's license and become, become a, a qualified marine pilot. Okay, I think uh, the best suited person for this job would be certainly somebody that is outgoing, somebody who's adventurous, and somebody who is wanting to gain as much experience as they can in the industry. It's, it's, it's a matter of loving the sea, wanting to travel. All these aspects come out in the industry. Initially, you, you set out to sail to different parts of the world. You cover different avenues. You meet different people. With regards to that, it's truly amazing just to get out there and see what's available. From there, when you come back to the port, the excitement doesn't slow down. You're still traveling with helicopters, you're meeting other people, and as far as that's concerned, it's character building and it's just a wonderful experience.